The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Recurring Revenue, Backup as a Service. This is, of course, a webinar designed to help service providers, managed service providers, learn a little bit more about a turnkey solution that you can add to your business and uh, make delivering backup as a service easier for you. Uh, so hope uh, that's what you're expecting. Hope you're in the right spot. Welcome everyone. We're gonna give people just a few seconds to get settled. I know we, I see we have people still coming in and, uh, and so we'll give them just a moment here. While we do that, I'll take a second to acknowledge that uh, we are delivering this webinar uh, remotely. Uh, those of us at Sadara, uh, for the purposes of being safe, have chosen to work remotely. I'm sure many of the people on this webinar today are experiencing similar conditions at their businesses. I hope everybody's staying safe. And uh, as you can see, we can be productive even when we're working remotely, which is great. All right, let's get rolling. I'm going to get us started by introducing today's speakers. Hello, my name is Greg Newman. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Zadar, and I'm happy to be joined by Kirk Jenkins, Solution Architect. Hi, Kirk. Good morning. Great to have you with us today. Of course, it's a topic that uh, involves uh, some uh, business aspects, and we'll get into that. It also involves some interesting technical aspects. There's things about uh, what we do that are technically very interesting, and Looking forward to talking about all of that with you. Before yeah, we thanks, jump, Greg. thanks, Kirk. So before we jump into it, uh, because I'm the marketing guy and I can't help myself, I want to do a quick commercial announcement. Those of you that don't know Zadara might be happy to learn that we are in fact a worldwide company. You can see on the screen here uh, many of the service providers with which we work currently, and uh, you can see that uh, that list contains some uh, very big names. We have over 250 points of presence around the world in uh, data centers uh, through some of the providers you see here. And we are serving brands uh, like the ones you see on the screen now. Uh, we're very proud and very happy. We've been doing this since 2011. Uh, we were uh, at the forefront of the movement, uh, the as a service movement in uh, IT, and we're very pleased that uh, we've been able to uh, work with some wonderful brands, uh, large and small. There are many, many more than you might see on this list here today, but, but these are some notable ones. Okay, that's the commercial. So Kirk, let's you and I get into it. Let's talk a little bit about this topic. That's what everybody came here today to learn about. And I think it all starts with an acknowledgement that backup is, it's always been, but really more than ever, as a business imperative. Um, this is something that uh, we've seen stories about. Uh, data loss is uh, serious. It has incredibly uh, serious ramifications for a company. Look at, this, look at the stat right in the middle. 94% of companies that suffer a catastrophic data loss do not survive. I think companies increasingly understand that and acknowledge it. Um, and in your career, Kirk, we've been doing this for a while, right? Um, you've seen all different types of backup yeah. strategies. You, 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 you yeah, you. and yeah, the interesting thing to me is that 50% uh, of all tape backups fail to restore. And in my experience across my career, that, that's very relevant to customers being able to um, maintain their business and, and keep, keep in business. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm glad you went right there. I was going to ask you about that. You know, everybody, of course, been doing this for a while. Like we have, you're familiar with tape. Uh, that statistic was a surprise to me when I first learned it a while ago. Uh, and I think it's important that people um, be aware of that because uh, it's not about the backup. It's about the restore, <laughs> right? It, the backup is only a means to an end. Exactly. All right, let's talk about backup and recovery. And the other thing about uh, um, just a, Please. a small piece about that is that, you know, a lot of customers don't realize how fragile uh, tapes are. Mm. Um, you know, we expect them to survive a long time in a very um, environmentally safe um, in 
environment in their data center, but if they lose power for a period of time, those tapes are, are subject to humidity and, and temperature variations that can really make them degrade. And so any weather events can, can really um, shorten the life of a tape that's sitting on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think people are, are understanding that now and uh, are moving away. Uh, most data growth, well, you can see the chart here, you know, there's tremendous data growth happening. Um, and uh, that's being driven, of course, because we're doing more and more online. And of course, the backups uh, that you want to want to do, why not keep it all in the cloud or why not keep it all uh, in the systems that you've built on your premises or or at your colo or in the cloud. Uh, so I don't know that tape is quite the go-to option that it once was, um, but there's certainly a lot of tape out there. And uh, people may think because it's been the routine they're used to that they'll just keep doing that. And I think it's important people get educated. There's a better way. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the, the market is growing by leaps and bounds because data is growing by leaps and bounds. And uh, we can see here on this chart that uh, the combined annual growth rate uh, of 24.2%, um, that is significant. That's outpacing uh, IT growth in general by quite a bit. Uh, so this is definitely a, a segment of the market to pay attention to. And then, you know, because today's audience and, and our topic today is all about uh, service providers, I thought I would take a look for the purposes of this um, webinar at some interesting information about uh, surveys that have been done to the service provider market and what they're saying. What are, what are we all talking about? Let's talk about it. We have here uh, the reasons to offer backup as a service. And I think that this survey will look familiar to anybody on this call who has done any kind of thinking about backup as a service and whether they might want to offer it. We want to generate recurring revenue. Isn't that the theme? for all of us, right? Isn't that what we all want? We know we're under a lot of pressure. Uh, service providers know that uh, they're getting pressure from uh, the public clouds. Uh, they're getting pressure from the, the changes that are happening in the legacy uh, systems market. And uh, we all need to make the shift. And generating recurring revenue is a big part of that. Um, obviously, you know, when you talk about growing, you're also thinking about protecting. And you can see that, that many service providers, 36% of them mentioned this. Uh, and then I think that uh, ultimately, um, you know, like we saw in the previous slide, customers are demanding it. They want to see that uh, uh, they can turn to a service provider for something like backup, which is inherently complicated, uh, and they can get the help of a service a service provider they trust. So I'd like to add that um, the increased net new sales is um, definitely a focus for managed service providers. But it goes hand in hand with gener generating reoccurring revenue uh, that once you get your foot in the door as a backup, as a service, that you can increase your net new sales by addressing other workloads that exist in that uh, customer's environment. So it makes it very easy in for managed service providers. Yes, you're exactly right. It's a it's a very easy way to get started with a customer and uh, and a great beachhead service that then you can uh, grow from, right? Uh, and we'll talk more about that because I think Sadara has some interesting points to make on how uh, we can help service providers to focus on their business um, and not worry so much about the infrastructure and uh, and the and the bits and pieces that are required in order to to make that happen. And that gets to this slide. So let's talk a little bit about this. This was interesting. I found this from the Technology Services Industry Association. It's a great group. If you're not a member, I suggest you take a look. Uh, they have some wonderful uh, educational and, uh, um, and informational resources. Um, the, the, the thrust of this slide, and, and this was uh, not a huge surprise, but, uh, but I'd say that the, uh, uh, the difference between uh, the, the two charts you see was a bit of a surprise. In other words, uh, those managed service providers that chose to partner up with a company that can help them deliver on services uh, that they may want to offer to their customers, they saw both uh, higher revenue growth and also uh, higher operating income. Um, 
And so I think this isn't necessarily immediately obvious to a lot of, uh, of partners. Those of us that have ever been in the business of, of offering IT uh, services, um, uh, IT uh, products and, and integration services, uh, you know, we're in the business of building things frequently, right? So there's a very strong DIY mentality. And it's easy to see how it might be tempting to want to cobble together a backup as a service offering. Uh, we at Zadara, we take a different view, right? We recommend uh, that you don't necessarily do that. And we're going to talk about why at, why at Zadara we think we have a compelling offer for not doing that. But, but perhaps most compelling is this slide right here, which says, uh, look, you, you focus on what it is you do best, work with partners that focus on what they do best, and watch how you make more money doing it that way. Yeah, and Sidara does um, uh, bring to the table some more um, global aspects to uh, partnering with us. So we, we have the availability of other clouds across the U.S. and world. So uh, making those resources available to MSPs allows them to grow outside their, their native region. Yeah, so that, what a great point. Exactly. So, you know, it's just one of those wonderful benefits that comes from partnering up, right? We all live in an ecosystem. We all have to, to focus on what it is we do best. Sometimes it's hard uh, to do that. And, uh, and, and so it's important to understand your options, understand your alternatives. In the case of Backup as a Service, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, exactly that, exactly how an alternative like Zadara can benefit you in, in uh, any number of ways. Uh, the, the first and most obvious uh, with regard to backup as a service, and I'm sure everybody on today's webinar has thought about this at least a little bit, is that there is, with recurring revenue, the power of compound growth. Uh, we thought it might be nice to see a slide taken from one of our actual uh, customers, uh, partners, showing how they added 12 customers over 18 months and grew their recurring revenue to over 170K from nothing. Uh, and so... This is fairly typical for us. We find that our partners do grow um, exponentially from, uh, from start uh, because uh, we help streamline uh, their, their go-to-market and, uh, and their sales motion and their operating uh, routines as well. And therefore, they can focus on uh, serving their customers and acquiring new ones. Well, how do we do that? Kirk, let's, let's now like, get into the meat of it, right? Let's talk about how it is that we, in fact, do deliver this turnkey solution that I promised at the, at the title slide we would talk about. And uh, there's a bit to it, right? There's, uh, there are a few component parts that we need to take a look at uh, because this, uh, yeah. we, we need all, all of these pieces in order to create what, what we think of as a complete storage as a service solution. And we think that uh, if you take a look at this and you, and you think carefully about these different component parts, uh, you'll see number one, these are mandatory. And number two, you're not gonna find any other vendor that can do this. We are, um, from what we can tell, the only complete storage as a service offering out there right now. Uh, I think it starts with uh, uh, the fact that we have a unified platform. Um, this is a different approach to storage, right, Kirk? Let's talk about that for just a moment. And then I know we'll have some follow-on slides that show this in greater detail, but let's just touch on that at a high level, if you would. Oh, sure. Um, so, for instance, uh, you know, our foundation is that we are an enterprise-grade storage platform. Uh, and we include all the enterprise features that customers expect. But like you pointed out, we are unified as well. We have the ability to do file, uh, block, and object all in the same storage platform at the same time. Uh, we also have the, the built-in tools that MSPs need to be able to um, show that their customers what they're using and be able to explain their billing to them uh, in, in a very easy manner. So this, this OPEX model that uh, we provide uh, has just um, multiple benefits for the MSPs uh, as well as the customers. The customers can realize a, a flexible environment that they can uh, really sink into. 
I'm so glad you mentioned that about the uh, the provisioning and the managing and the metering. Um, I, I think this is where it's important for us to to take it uh, bit by bit and explain that this is a hardware plus software solution, 100% OpEx. Uh, the hardware itself uh, is industry standard hardware that we uh, we run on. Uh, we offer two uh, two component parts to our software. One, of course, is our software defined storage and, and the software that you use to provision and manage uh, storage arrays. And we're going to take a look at how that works in a moment, uh, as well as what you just said, Kirk, which is that there is software and, and an operations layer and an, and an ops panel that allows for uh, MSPs to very easily manage multiple customers, to build them according to their usage, and to make sure that uh, uh, they can run uh, their business using Zadara um, and uh, and serve multiple customers easily doing it. So, and let me, let me point out the last piece, which sometimes we gloss over, but I don't think we should here. And that is, we are a service. When we say storage is a service, it's very easy to focus on storage, right? That's the first word in that, in that phrase. But in fact, we like to focus on the word service. We think that it's important that when you think about storage as a service, you understand that that last mile, that last bit, which is to, to make sure that somebody is there serving the storage, managing it and maintaining it, uh, that creates a complete solution. If you are simply looking to purchase storage in an OPEX model, uh, that's great, uh, but um, it doesn't really fulfill on the promise of storage as a service, now does it? Because uh, it is all about having a very different storage experience. And our expert managers and, and our expert ops team, which is located on four continents and is available 24-7, 365, uh, we are there to stand behind you and make sure that you are being given uh, several things that are key. Number one, proactive support and management. That doesn't just mean we're there if something goes wrong. It means we're paying attention to the storage. We're looking at operating thresholds that uh, you've established or that we've established together. Uh, we're being proactive about whether or not your uh, storage is meeting the needs of your environment. And, uh, and if it's not, well, then we have seamless upgrades. Uh, these are important features of how a storage as a service ought to work. And we find that that's often glossed over. Uh, Kirk, I think you've, you, know, you work closely with customers and you see that um, uh, that aspect of our, of our service um, tends to be one that's held in higher and higher regard uh, the longer a customer is with us. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of our um, uh, customers originally discount the um, as a service, like you said, and, you know, it's really important to realize that, you know, our operations team is, is always looking at your storage you know, we'll make suggestions if they see that either you're not utilizing the storage you provision or maybe uh, seamlessly migrating you to uh, a different technology that would bring out the cost and, and best benefit uh, your environment. So having our operations team, especially in a managed service environment, um, it frees up uh, the customer or the managed service provider the ability to do things that are um, better for their business, you know, driving uh, more business uh, within their environment and not having to worry about the day-to-day -day management of hardware and performance and capacity. Exactly. So that's, that's a great, that's a great point. And, Greg. and, and I, I think as we transition to talking a little bit about some scenarios, I want to, I want to take one moment to point out that, that I did say earlier hardware, we ship hardware to your, location if, uh, if that's needed. If uh, you'd like to, uh, because I presume many of you who are on this call today are, are operating your own data centers, we ship hardware to your data center. Uh, you saw the list of uh, uh, data centers throughout the world that we work with. And if you are working in those data centers and want to tap into Zadara in those data centers, well, hardware already exists in those data centers. But the, the point, of course, is that whenever there's a hardware component, um, that means hardware has to get shipped. It means it has to get maintained. Uh, when Kirk talks about upgrading or migrating you 
Um, if that hardware, the hardware that's currently on your premises or in your data center is not sufficient, we simply ship more uh, and you pay only for that which you use. Uh, that's a, uh, I, I can't put too fine a point on it, right? That's something that, that comes up frequently and I wanna make sure that we're clear about that. And, uh, and if you have any questions about that, by the way, we will have time at the end of this webinar. I should have pointed out earlier, I'm sure all of you are familiar with GoToWebinar, but please do use the questions panel in your GoToWebinar uh, interface to ask any questions and we will uh, get to those at the end and we'll be happy to answer them. All right, let's talk about backup business, backup to object storage. Kirk, will you walk us through this? This is a, a very common scenario, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, within uh, the Zadara framework, we can be the uh, production storage platform uh, that customers put their primary workloads on and, and natively built into the Zadara stack, we have the ability to back up to our own object store as well as replicate to any S3 compatible object store. So uh, we give customers uh, a lot of options um, and, and these native tools that are built in are, are very beneficial, they're very low cost, and it, it gives the customers the flexibility to, to make sure they're using only what they need to use and, and are maintaining their backups for the um, necessary period that they need to maintain them. So it, again, built into our software, and if you're running a primary storage with Zadara, you can use our backup to object store, right? Correct. Well, let's talk about something a little more complicated. So, the, the, yeah, this is a great uh, uh, scenario that um, Veeam has really been a, a really great partner of ours. Mm -hmm. And um, their ability to recognize that Sadara, we provide the file block and object that they can use in, a, in, in their backup stream very effectively. So we can be the primary backup on-premise, and then we can be the secondary copy uh, that can be on-premise or off-premise. And then we have the object store for uh, long-term. Uh, within Veeam's release of V10, they introduce immutability on object store. So that means once you write a backup to our object store, uh, cannot be modified and it cannot be deleted for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And that is up to the customer to develop that policy. So that really gives you a, a bulletproof technology against ransomware, mm -hmm. uh, malware, things like that. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and what, what Beam has done in promulgating these best practices, uh, I think is absolutely critical for everybody to, to follow whether you're using Veeam or Commvaults or Asigra or Zerto or other, other backup providers, uh, this is just good practice. And as a storage provider, the fact that we uh, can provide storage at every tier, multiple tiers, multiple locations, I, I think this is critical. This is how, uh, if you're an MSP and you're thinking about how you're gonna offer backup as a service, again, whether you're using Veeam or another backup provider, uh, don't overlook the importance of, of streamlining it with a storage provider like Zadara that can, in fact, uh, check all these boxes and give you that multi-tier capability. And, uh, and the immutability stuff, uh, Kirk, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Ransomware has been huge. Everybody knows this. Everybody's seeing the stories. It's scary, scary stuff. To be able to have a solution uh, to that is uh, absolutely a huge part of of your go-to-market offering for customers because it is undoubtedly on their minds. And in fact, we produce uh, materials in the form of uh, thought leadership content and uh, articles and data sheets uh, expressly on ransomware. It's just that hot of a topic. We want to make sure everybody's uh, understanding it. Uh, so I'm glad you brought it up. It's a real driver. Well, it seems to me it would be appropriate, Kirk, to, to get a little bit deeper on, uh, you know, we, we took a look in the last couple of slides on how Zadara might fit into a scenario. What is under the hood? What exactly is the Zadara virtual private storage array technology all about? 
uh, the, this slide, I think, is uh, very helpful for folks to see how in a multi-tenant environment, which of course can be very efficient, Fedora can help you deliver a single tenant experience. Um, talk to us a little bit about how that, how, how do we do that, Kirk? It's, uh, I think this is really, um, I got to hand it to our founders. This is brilliant stuff. Yeah, it is. So, you know, they, they came up with uh, uh, providing storage as a service and they wanted to make it uh, uh, very easy to consume. So um, why not use uh, off-the-shelf x86 and, and 40 gig networking components uh, so that we can make a highly resilient uh, infrastructure um, that has no single points of failure um, and can scale uh, very easily for a customer. Like you mentioned earlier, um, you know, we use x86 servers, um, but we can, we can scale the environment um, as a managed service provider needs um, seamlessly. So at no cost to the managed service provider, uh, we can start at a 2 node configuration, and um, we need to have at least two nodes uh, in our stack. So we provide no single point of failure there. And then we can scale to dozens or, or hundreds of nodes in the environment. Mm -hmm. So this picture depicts uh, six storage nodes. So the vertical columns are the storage nodes. And our storage nodes can have anywhere from 24 to 36 uh, drive bays available. So that gives you a, a very large storage footprint to begin with. And uh, within that infrastructure, we will always over provide. So we will always have uh, more storage resources than a customer will need initially. So that A, they can grow uh, seamlessly, or uh, we also have uh, drives available for, for hardware failures. Um, and, you know, we dedicate resources. So uh, for instance, uh, the virtual private storage array number one, uh, this customer wanted a fairly small engine, so we're going to provide him with two cores on the active uh, virtual controller and then two spare cores on the uh, passive uh, virtual controller. And then we'll, we'll dedicate four drives to that virtual private storage array. So they get dedicated drives, the whole drive is dedicated to that particular customer, there's no sharing mm -hmm. uh, in the environment. And it, it really allows them to feel comfortable that, yes, this is my storage array. I can uh, manage it as I see fit. I can provision it. Mm -hmm. um, I can e expand the storage or contract the storage as needed. So I am elastic in every direction. Um, if I need to, I can increase the engine size on the fly. Mm -hmm. So I can throw more compute and memory resources at a workload if I need to. So, and then independent uh, of uh, VPSA number one, uh, VPSA number two or the object storage can be provisioned uh, without VPSA, the customer number one, uh, even recognizing that anything else is going on. So they mm -hmm. don't suffer from the noisy neighbor issues. Yep. Um, and we can provide a, a very low latency, low latency connection into the storage array for all the customers. And they can have their own VLANs, uh, they have their own dedicated drives, they have their own dedicated virtual private storage array. And for MSPs, uh, uh, this is huge because they, and realize the economy at scale um, by standing up on an environment like this and being able to show billing for each individual customer and being able to seamlessly scale the environment and not having to pay for the uh, infrastructure that they're not using. Exactly, you know, the efficiencies for MSPs, um, who of course by definition operate in a multi-tenant environment, uh, it, they're just huge, they're multiplied by many factors as compared to even an end user customer. Um, you're exactly right. The, uh, this, is, this is a good, good time to point out what we like to say in summary uh, with respect to our approach to the market is very simple. It's 
we are bringing the control and performance of enterprise storage together with the agility of the cloud model. And, and we think we've achieved that with the architecture that Kirk, uh, you just ran through. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say about this, it's on everybody's mind, here we are talking about backup. Uh, you talk about performance, you also mentioned security. Um, you know, data sovereignty and security is, is key and our environment, of course, uh, ensures that. I thought I would take a moment, Kirk, I put this slide together because I want to make sure everybody on this call and in this webinar, because it's focused on backup, can see some of the data protection features that are available inside of uh, Zadara's storage as a service in our software. Uh, it's a big list. I don't necessarily want to um, go through each one of these, but, uh, but this is the kind of stuff that anybody who runs enterprise storage for a living, frankly, expects. And, uh, and it's important to point out that we do, in fact, have it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, our snapshot technology is, is really cool. We do uh, redirect on write uh, snapshots, so they're very fast and very small capacity. Um, remote mirroring, you know, just about any um, customer or NSP recognizes that mirroring is, is probably your easiest way to recover from any issues in your environment very quickly. Um, and Let's not uh, uh, forget that um, with our storage as a service, our operations people are, are available to help MSPs do live vol volume migration from one array to another array. So that, that can be a huge benefit for an MSP if uh, a customer wants to change it up and move to a higher performance storage tier. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, let's take a look. Kirk, I just looked at the time. I want to make sure being respectful. We're 31 minutes in. Uh, I want to uh, go through these next couple of slides a little quickly. They're important. You can see, of course, about security on this slide. Uh, but we've got some uh, great customer stories that I'd like to get to. So let's, um, let's do that. I think everybody understands that uh, uh, if you don't have security covered, then everything else we've been talking about is, is really of uh, no importance. Uh, here we have uh, the, the dedicated hardware that we talked about, of course, uh, in-flight and at-rest encryption, and we do not hold the keys. The keys are held by the data owner, uh, and uh, that means that this truly is under your control. Um, and that, that ticks all the boxes for uh, the data compliance regimes that uh, we know we have to satisfy, that you have to satisfy. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Kirk, anybody who's managed storage for a living is probably going to find our software looks really familiar. Uh, there's a, a picture of it right there on a screen. Um, it, we have uh, ways to provision and manage uh, virtual private storage arrays uh, in the same way that you would provision and manage any storage array. It's a web-based system, so it's always available. Uh, you also get, of course, um, analytics and performance metrics. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, chargebacks and actual usage um, we talked about earlier. Um, so there's a layer, you know, in addition to managing the storage, there's a layer about uh, managing multiple tenants as well. Uh, Kirk, you're in the system in the software quite a bit. Um, pretty easy to use, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, you know, and we didn't reinvent the wheel on the storage management interface. So everything is logically laid out. Uh, the dashboard is intuitive, so a customer can see at a glance exactly uh, what they're using as far as capacity and and uh, how their virtual controllers are performing. So uh, you know it's it's very intuitive and it's uh, uh, fairly standard uh, as far as it goes, but it does have a all of our features in place. So uh, you can do backup to object store, you can do control mirroring uh, through this interface. So it makes it very easy uh, to manage. I'm, I'm so glad you said it the way you did. It's uh, We didn't reinvent the wheel, right? There's no point in, in reinventing the wheel. Uh, the wheel works perfectly well. And in case of the software, it works great. Um, our innovations come in other forms, like we talked about earlier, but the software is uh, very straightforward, so it makes it a very easy transition uh, to move from uh, whatever you might have been using before to Zadara. 
Let's talk about Viatel. Uh, I grabbed this one, Kirk, because they recently came out with uh, a Veeam plus Zadara solution for backup. They announced it uh, just recently, last couple of weeks. And uh, they've been with us a long time. We've been a storage partner of theirs for uh, many years. But this new announcement from them, I think, is a great example of how they were able to move quickly to address a market need that they perceived without having to get into large expenses and, and a large development project on their end. They simply uh, put together Veeam and Zadara, and uh, within a matter of weeks, they were um, up and running. Uh, so they could be in the business of promoting this to their customers. Yeah, and it's uh, interesting that you know they can already leverage the Veeam expertise that they have in-house. And uh, since they have the experience with uh, the Zadara cloud platform, you know, they can put the two together very quickly since they have the experience on both sides and deliver a seamless product to their end users. Yeah, exactly. So they're a large telco and uh, in a large organization like that, uh, you think might have the bandwidth and might even have the appetite to want to do do more, but uh, they made the prudent business decision to, to work with the partners in the ecosystem, including Veeam and, and Zadara, uh, and have gained uh, the benefits as a result. Um, I thought we'd take a look at a, a, a different type of partner. Um, this is a partner focused on healthcare, so uh, serving the healthcare market, and uh, um, smaller, they're not a telco, and they, uh, they realize that uh, uh, their expertise um, is in, in understanding their customers' needs, not in uh, building and managing storage arrays. Uh, they had uh, done it before in, their, in the past and had seen that the capital outlays were large and that they weren't necessarily getting the performance that they might otherwise get and uh, brought us in uh, several years ago to, uh, to really change the way um, they approached solving the storage equation. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, um, we've discovered that, uh, and, and NetTrep is a good example of this, is what you were talking about earlier, Kirk, which is um, the idea of, of as a customer needs change, being able to migrate to either um, uh, different uh, storage pools for, for different uh, workloads or maybe um, you know, moving things to a more, uh, let's say, cost-efficient workload uh, or, or media, excuse me, um, uh, but also as new technologies become available and, and we ship new gear, uh, they can seamlessly migrate customers from, uh, let's say, an HDD-based system to an SSD-based system, help them achieve uh, performance goals uh, without incurring a, a cost on their end or, in, in some cases, um, providing their customers with even a more attractive uh, cost basis, because as we all know, if there's a if there's a, a certainty in storage, it's that uh, the cost per gigabyte over time inevitably goes down, and they are able to scale their business and see and realize those gains and those savings um, on a, almost on a real time basis, right? As the technologies evolve. Yeah, there's another really good point uh, uh, to um, managed service providers like this is that every three years they are going to um, receive uh, from Zadara a, a new uh, cloud to migrate their uh, from their old hardware to new hardware. We can do that seamlessly in the background and they don't have to realize a new capital outlay every three years. Yep. So it really provides uh, uh, a huge benefit to them that, you know, their costs will stay the same over time and they will realize benefits and their customers will realize benefits of new technology that is more efficient and less expensive. So it's, a, it's exactly true. And then we all know that um, technology is changing ever more rapidly. This idea of, of, uh, buying hardware for a particular period, whether it's three years or five years, and then and then spreading those costs over that time, that's a very natural business planning exercise. We all do it, and yet, uh, you know, thanks to the pace with which technology changes, we find that those plans get disrupted. Right? Customers come to us and they say, "We really want to take advantage of of some new technologies. Can you help us with that?" 
and suddenly you're faced with a decision as an IT services provider, gee, do I have to go buy more and new gear? And what does that mean for the cost basis of the gear that I've already invested in? You are now free with Zadar. That, that question is no longer a concern. You, you don't have to worry about it. We take that burden off your shoulders and you simply uh, work with Zadara to get the, the new gear shipped. Uh, we're adding new uh, features and functionality and new media types all the time. A good example, last year we, uh, we came out with our NVMe um, solution so that that, uh, that new technology could be incorporated into our, uh, into our storage stack. And sure enough, saw customers begin to take advantage of it uh, without having to spend uh, big bucks to, to bring it in. Yeah, it's nice that we can be very flexible for our MSP providers as, as well as our end user customers. So as we get near the end, a uh, good time to summarize. Uh, we talk about business transformation a lot in, in IT. Uh, we hear that term bounced around a lot, the digital transformation. This truly is a transformative approach uh, that we've taken. And uh, we hope we've been able to share with you today uh, some of it, you can understand uh, a little bit about how it works. Uh, you can decide for yourself whether it's right for you. Um, you know, when you think about uh, a fully managed storage service, it's not a lease. Uh, you retain all of the things you like about enterprise uh, storage, all the all the functionality, all the control, but you get it in a in a single service now that is uh, remarkably flexible. Uh, you know, we're software defined storage at, at our heart. Uh, delivered in a service model. Um, we talked about the fact that uh, you can grow and you can shrink and you and you know full well that you're uh, paying only for what you consume and you bring those upgrades that you might want on whenever you like, doesn't have to be at a three-year interval. Uh, and, uh, and last but not least, um, we've got your back. We're a partner's partner. We're there for you to help uh, manage your storage so that you can focus on your business. Uh, and, uh, and if we've uh, managed to uh, give you a good understanding of those points today, then we've succeeded, and I appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more, uh, one of the best ways we can think to do it is to go check it out yourself. Um, please try it. Uh, free trial is a great way to get started. Um, there's no obligation. There's no credit card. There's no sign-ups for anything other than to engage with our ops team uh, describe your your needs and your goals and uh, and get a trial environment set up that you can then uh, use to evaluate whether or not uh, Zadara might be right for you. So we would encourage everybody to please uh, take some time uh, and go through it in a free trial. I think it's probably the best way to, to see for yourself. Uh, Kirk, as we get near the end, uh, anything to add here about to what we've covered today. Well, I'd just like to say, you know, in my experience with Zadara, it's it's been great being here and um, the the ability to to address customers' concerns right up front um, is you know uh, very helpful. Um, and getting into the free trial, you know, uh, please engage us. Um, you can call me or, or work through our, our uh, trial interface, uh, and we can show you how easy it is to set up a, uh, an environment uh, either for testing or production, um, and you can do it today. You don't have to wait uh, for equipment to show up on site. You can do it right now. Uh, it's very easy and intuitive. And if you need more explanations, you can definitely engage with the sales team and we can walk you through it uh, with more explanation if needed. Cool. Yeah, it's true. I think it's important to engage with us at the outset. Uh, it is a different approach. It's uh, very intuitive in many ways, like you say, but um, the approach is different. And uh, um, working with our team will help you very quickly get up to speed on, on how this might impact positively. Uh, your business and, and your approach with your customers. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions, and uh, I see we um, we have a few. Uh, if we can't get to everybody's questions today, we'll certainly follow up. Um, but one of the questions, one of the first questions here that I see is about pricing. 
uh, we get a lot of questions about this. How, how does it work exactly? And uh, um, we'll, we'll give a brief answer here. And then uh, I would encourage you to please go to our website where you'll find more information about pricing. Um, and in fact, there's a pricing calculator as well online. So you can do a little bit of, um, of gaming out a scenario that might make sense to you. And you can see how it might, uh, might work out in your case. Uh, our pricing is truly consumption-based. Whatever storage you provision, and Kirk talked earlier about the drives uh, that you would provision for different users, uh, depending on uh, their workloads and, and their needs, uh, those provisioned drives then become the basis for the billing. And billing can be, uh, and the pricing can be um, based on um, uh, simply hourly billing, right? Uh, straight up, just like a cloud service, like you might expect. Uh, and uh, as an MSP, you might be interested to learn that if you do make commitments, uh, we do offer significant discounts. And uh, those commitments vary depending on the time, and the, and the discounts vary depending on the time commitment. Uh, and to learn more about how those work, again, please visit our website. Uh, but I think you'll find that our pricing is uh, very competitive when it comes to storage. Uh, and uh, and the last thing I'll say about pricing, and Kirk, you you touched on it nicely uh, throughout our presentation, is that when when you look at look at us as an as a service approach, please understand that you're buying more than storage. Your customers are buying more than storage from you. Uh, they are buying uh, business agility. They're buying the flexibility that comes with the as a service model, and uh, um, there are a number of factors that weigh in. Uh, and go into um, what make up the total service package uh, and looking at things in terms of per gigabyte per hour, uh, don't, they, they don't always provide, that, that view doesn't always provide uh, a complete picture as to what you're getting. So uh, again, as, as part of your exploration of, of Zadara, please engage with us, learn more about um, our approach, our model, including our pricing model. Uh, all right, we have a question here. Um, uh, where can I learn more about uh, your relationship with Veeam? Um, good news, we have a whole section on our website dedicated to Veeam and how that works. Uh, we are a Veeam partner, and um, uh, if you are a Veeam partner as well, then you'll be very familiar with our approach and how we do things with Veeam. Uh, if you're a uh, so please go to our website and check it out. It's underneath our solution section. Uh, you'll see a Veeam webpage, uh, and I would encourage you to start there. The, uh, if you're partners with a different uh, backup provider, uh, chances are we're partnered up with them as well, and we work with them. So uh, it doesn't just have to be Veeam, although uh, they're terrific, um, and we work with them quite a bit, especially lately. Uh, the uh, the fact is that whatever backup provider you work with, chances are we're already working with them on a number of implementations. And, uh, and our uh, solution architects like Kirk can walk you through that and describe and provide examples if you're interested. All right, we're getting near the end um, and uh, I just have a couple minutes left. So I wanna make sure that everybody knows that if you have more questions, you can reach out uh, anytime. Uh, we have uh, one last time for one last question, and it goes back, Kirk, to uh, uh, the slide that uh, shows our system uh, at the heart and uh, at the heart of our system. I want to go back there because this question involves this, um, and uh, the question is: so, so you're really when you say virtual private storage array, is that is that really private? I think somebody's. I, I think the thrust of the question is is. Um, are, Am I really seeing this right? Or am I getting total privacy uh, between my tenants? And, and the short answer is yes, but Kirk, let's, let's just unpack that for just a moment. Well, sure. So uh, we do have the capability and, and when we do provision uh, for a customer or, or MSP's provision for a customer, they dedicate uh, the virtual controllers for that particular array. They dedicate the drives. Uh, we can dedicate a, a VLAN, so from entry into the system all the way down to the drive layer, um, they have uh, total control and visibility only to their virtual private storage array. So they have no idea how many other tenants might be in the environment. They can't tell by performance um, indications because we don't suffer from the noisy neighbor issues. 
And we've proven this. We have um, a site in uh, Ashburn, Virginia, where we have uh, literally hundreds of customers all coexisting in this multi-tenant environment. And, and none of the customers can tell uh, that there's anybody else but them on that particular uh, virtual private storage array. Yep. Yeah, it's it is impressive, uh, and uh, and that's why I say we you know we encourage you to take a deeper dive. Um, this is uh, this is a significant difference in approach, and it makes a huge difference in terms of your approach to your business and how you think about uh, storage as a component of the service offerings that you choose to put in front of your customers. Today, of course, we talked about backup. Uh, but backup uh, is only one uh, service offering that I'm sure you have um, in front of your customers now or want to put in front of your customers. And like Kirk said earlier, uh, it may very well be a great place for you to start if you're just transitioning to uh, um, away from, say, a more traditional VAR model or an integrator model and are looking to add services. Backup's a great place to start and it can be a beachhead. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, Kirk, I want to thank you very much for being a part of today's webinar. I appreciate your expertise. Thanks, Rick. It was great being here. Uh, everybody that uh, joined us today, thank you very much. Again, uh, we look forward to uh, working with you. If you have an interest, please reach out to us and uh, look forward to um, talking with you and sharing with you again in our next webinar. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.